Hi, my name is Jeff Kotz, and I'd like to welcome you to today's lecture on how to calculate a bivariate chi-square. In order to get started, we need to open the Statistical Test Decision Tree PowerPoint file. I already have that open. And why don't we just go ahead and get started? If you'll notice, uh, the bottom there, it says view as a slideshow for animated and interactive fun. Uh, most of this PowerPoint is linked in some way to other parts of it. So all of these four tests here, univariate chi-square, bivariate chi-square, t-test, and correlation, the green boxes on the right here are dynamic so that if you click on them, it'll take you immediately to the section on whatever test you're looking at. And I'm going to go back here and notice that periodically you'll see these arrows, these leftward pointing arrows. Uh, that will go ahead and take you right back to the beginning of the file if you ever need to do that. But let me go ahead and get started by taking you right to bivariate chi-square. Remember, in order to choose the correct test, you need to answer a series of questions. When you start, you identify how many variables you have in a given analysis. If you have only one variable, immediately that tells you that it's a univariate chi-square. However, if you have two variables, you need to answer a couple of questions about the level of measurement. First of all, if the independent variable is measured at a categorical level, uh, that means that you can either have a bivariate chi-square or a t-test. In other words, we've got a couple of groups we're comparing. In the event that it's a t-test, typically we can think about two groups as being experimental condition, control condition, perhaps males and females, and things like that. However, if the dependent variable is measured at the categorical level, that's going to take us to the bivariate chi-square. So let's go ahead and go there now. As you can see right here, we have the two major parts of the formula. The formula for the chi-square, which is the sum of the observed minus expected values squared, divided by the expected values. And the degrees of freedom is the number of rows in your contingency table times the number of columns in your contingency table. What you're about to see will eventually take you through one specific example. And it tries to take you through step by step so that if you're doing this at home, you can follow right along. Chi-square tests will provide evidence as to whether or not there are significant differences between groups at the nominal level. Again, we're talking about categorically measured variables. And here's the formula, which looks slightly different than the formula you may have seen a couple of slides ago. The subscripts I and J represent rows and columns. In the case of a bivariate chi-square, you're always comparing observed values to expected values within a specific cell. You'll remember from calculating a univariate chi-square that depending on whether or not you have assumed equal or unequal expected values, you calculate or um, simply take your expected values as the total number of observations divided by the number of categories. Or if you're given other data, that will help you establish what your expected values are. But in the case of a bivariate chi-square, you're going to have to calculate those expected values for each individual cell. Let's take apart the formula now. The O in the formula means the observed frequency. It's what we have in our data, and when we get to our example, we'll be able to take a closer look at that. The E represents our expected frequency. Remember, in the case of chi-square, we're always comparing observed values to expected values. Again, the subscripts represent the fact that we're talking about each individual cell. And the giant sigma at the front of the formula tells you that we're going to add a whole bunch of these things together. And we take our calculated chi-square, which we get using the formula, and the degrees of freedom, and we compare it to the critical value on the chi-square table. If our chi-square value is greater than the critical value we found, we can say that we have statistical significance. I'm going to take a short aside and go back to one of the slides at the beginning of this presentation. And what we can see here is that you're always making a decision on whether or not to accept or reject the null hypothesis based on two values. Your calculated value, which you get from the formula, and the critical value, which you get from the table. You go to the table given a certain level of degrees of freedom and a certain level of alpha error or the amount of um, significance that you're willing to accept, the significance level, and you compare those two values. So in the event that our calculated value is greater than our critical value, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the research hypothesis. Now in certain cases with t-tests and correlations, if a directional hypothesis is posed, you'll have to double check at the end to make sure it's the right relationship. 
For example, if we suggest that the average mean height for males is lower than the average mean height for females, we may find a significant difference in the t-test. However, once we check to see if it's the right relationship, we'll notice that in fact our hypothesis, our research hypothesis, was incorrect. That in fact it is males that are taller than females on average, as opposed to the other way around.